sponsored by Brilliant. I'm Renee Ritchie. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my WWDC 2020 deep dives, like this, on watchOS 7. WatchOS 7 works on the 2017 Apple Watch Series 3, which, importantly, was just re-released in 2019 for just $199, as well as the Apple Watch Series 4 and 5. So, yeah, the 2016 Apple Watch Series 1 and Series 2 watches with the S2 and its S1P variant system and package, which were released with WatchOS 3, are no longer being updated. And, of course, not every watchOS 7 feature, for example, the widescreen watch faces, will be supported on the older, smaller design of the Series 3, but all the base stuff and security updates at the very least. WatchOS 7 is getting a bunch of features that are also coming to iOS 14. Since I already did a whole video on that, seriously, hit subscribe, everything is connected, I don't want to recapitulate it all here but it includes cycling directions in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Beijing, and Shanghai, which offer you a bunch of options so you can choose between the quickest, but maybe a more difficult route, like in streets rather than bike paths or with stairs or much steeper inclines, or easier, but maybe longer routes. They're made especially big and easy to read on the Apple Watch, and you can search along the way for bike shops, restrooms, anything you want. Dictation is also going on device for Apple Watches with neural engines, which is the Series 4 and the Series 5, and starting with US English, but with other languages to follow. Translation is being offered in 10 language pairs to start, and the Series Shortcuts app is coming to Apple Watch and can even be added to complications. Can I get a finally? Year after year, Apple scratches things off my Apple Watch wish list. Onboard LTE, edge to edge display, on device app store, always on display, and this year, it's sleep tracking. And the implementation is both better and worse than I imagined. Let me explain. I originally wondered if Apple was gonna restrict sleep tracking to new hardware, like the always-on display, a new watch with a special low power and high sensor combination that just made it work, but they didn't. Sleep tracking is coming to existing Apple Watch owners, which is great. When you go into sleep mode, you also go into do not disturb, so you won't get beeped, you won't get buzzed, and the screen sleep locks so it won't brighten if you raise up your wrist unintentionally. If you do want to see date and time or alarm settings, you can still tap it or just press a digital crown. It all integrates with the existing iOS bedtime feature, but it's smart enough to realize that if you're still moving around, you probably aren't ready for bed yet. Also, if there's less than 30% charge on your Apple Watch, you'll get a notification so you can top it up while you're getting ready for bed. To help, there's a wind down mode, which can play soundscapes, run meditation or journaling apps, set home scenes, and otherwise help you get ready for bed. And to help you wake up, the bedtime system sounds and optionally the Taptic Engine jump in. Then you get a good morning screen similar to what bedtime has been providing for the iPhone for a while now. If you wake up within a half an hour of your bedtime window, you'll be prompted to shut down the alarm so it doesn't bother you later. The watch's wake-up screen also shows you its current charge level, so you can top it up while you're doing your daily ablutions as well. When it's charged, it'll ping your iPhone so you don't forget and just leave it on the charger. You can see your sleep stats daily, weekly, and over time, which includes the hours in bed and actually asleep and heart rate summaries. What you don't get is any breakdown of the kind of sleep though, like light, deep, and REM that other sleep trackers provide. And that's disappointing. Now, it's possible Apple just doesn't want to step too heavily on the toes of those other sleep trackers, which wouldn't be unusual. Quote unquote, Sherlocking, which means building previously third party features into the operating system is still highly controversial. So Apple will often err on the side of providing only base functionality and leave the more advanced stuff to those third party apps or it could just represent what Apple's providing to existing watches now, and future software and hardware updates may offer even more functionality. We live in the age of a pandemic where it's so hard just to get your average North American to stay home, to wash their damn hands, and to wear a mask that, as several other places around the world see their infection and death rates plummet, some of ours continue to soar. With that as the backdrop, Apple's adding an Apple Watch feature that they probably wouldn't have even considered more than a few months ago, hand washing. It'll automatically detect when you start washing your hands based on your movements and the sound of soap and water and give you a 20 second timer so you don't have to sing happy birthday anymore, twice. Then taptic you when you're done. Thanks to location awareness, it'll also remind you to wash your hands when you get home and you can check in the health app to see how long and how often you've been washing up. Apple's doing a lot more with sound recognition in general as well. Something I forgot to mention in the iOS video is that you can now set up accessibility to recognize alarms, pets, appliances, running water, crying, and screaming, 
and alert you. Whether you're low or no hearing or just tend not to notice when you leave the tap going, it's on device so it's private and it's just absolutely terrific stuff. Also, for your own ears, Hearing Health will now report your weekly dose of headphone sound intensity and notify you if you go over safe limits. New watch OS also means new watch faces. Because watch. This year, that's the Chronograph Pro, which sports a tachometer, and you can compute speed based on travel time and measure distance based on speed. X-Large also has been updated with an X-Large complication for people with low vision or massive desire for total watch domination. Plus, the Photos face now has dozens of color filters that you can apply to better match your band or just your mood. But I still wish Photos had much better, richer complication support as well. Not just because I want a proper Superman watch so badly, but because I legit think it would remove a ton of tension from the custom watch face crowd. My favorite new watch feature this year though, by far, is face sharing. So if you make just the perfect travel or workout or hiking or biking or weekend or whatever, brunching face, and your friend wants it, you can just send it right over. From the iPhone, you go to the watch face gallery, choose the face, hit share, pick a contact and message, airdrop or mail it right on over. From the Apple Watch, you just long press on the face you want to share, tap the share icon, select the contact and it'll iMessage away. And yeah, I just said long press. Just like Apple has gone away from 3D touch on the iPhone, they're now going away from force touch on the Apple Watch as well. RIP. Deleted. In most places, not even replaced with haptic touch, but just over menu option. Here's hoping those will actually end up being even more discoverable to even more people. And six months from now, I'll barely remember force touch was even a thing, which if Apple adds better machine learning to haptic touch. I may be able to do with 3D touch as well, but I digress. Now, if one of you has a Series 3 and the other a Series 4 or 5, some translation will have to happen to the watch face due to the differences in the displays. Also, if the face uses third-party complications from an app, they'll be prompted to download those as well. The App Store will be posting curated watch faces to go with apps and themes, which is great, especially because apps can now offer multiple complications, so you can have a full-on fantastical or carrot weather watch if those fine folks choose to make it so. And watch faces can be offered online as well, both on the web and through social. So companies, sorry, we call them brands now, my bad, I forgot. You, me, anyone at all can share our faves. A watchOS update just wouldn't be a watchOS update if it didn't also include new workout types. This year, that's dance, 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 specifically Latin, Bollywood, hip hop, and cardio. It uses sensor fusion to figure out the asynchronous arm and leg movements, so you get credit for every single one of your uns, 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 uns hot steps. There's also functional strength training for everyday activities like family sports, carrying things around the house, basically the work from home, workouts from home we've all been doing, core training and cool down as well. Selfishly, still no snow shoveling or taiji, but maybe next year. Also, activity is now fitness because the scope of what you can do is just so far beyond closing rings now. It's also been redesigned on the iPhone to improve the information density and glanceability of your data so you can find what you want and see it far more quickly. WatchOS 7 also provides mobility metrics for functional capacity now, which uses the watch's motion sensors and algorithms to measure low range cardio fitness, walking speed, stair speed, and in combination with iOS 14 on the iPhone, step length, double support time, and asymmetry measurements. This apparently is stuff that required medical labs in the past and is once again an example of why Apple says their biggest contribution to society will one day be measured by health features and why I keep saying the watch is the most important product Apple has ever made because it saves lives deliberately by design. You'll be able to check out all of that in the health app and medical professionals can build for it with the new health kit features. How all of these machine learning algorithms work is beyond fascinating, and you can learn all about it with Brilliant's new Neural Networks course. Here's an example. You have to locate your keys, but your room is just beyond messy. As you look, your wall tiles change colors, revealing how close or far your last guess was from your keys. Even if you have no clear indication how to structure your guesses, you can still get better round after round, figuring out your strategy based on the feedback and finding your keys in surprisingly few guesses. Brilliance, brilliance is teaching you complex concepts just like this by breaking them up into bite-sized understandable chunks. You start by having fun with their interactive explorations, but over time you'll be amazed at what you can learn. 
Go to brilliant.org slash Ritchie and sign up for free. And the first 200 of you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant. Thanks to all of you for your support. Check out the WWC playlist for more and see you next video.